Greetings, Sunday School Scholars from all over the world. It is Sunday School time, and our topic today is Preparation for Deliverance. Our Bible basis is in the book of Exodus. So we have went from Genesis to Exodus, the third chapter, verses 7 through 17. We're on lesson 10, and today's date of this lesson is November 5th, 2023. Let us pray. Dear Father, we praise you because you created the challenges we face in life. Mm. We praise you because if you created the challenges, you can help us overcome the challenges. We ask for more faith and courage when we are placed in challenging situations. Help us not to shrink back in fear, but to walk in courage. Walk in courage and obedience, knowing that you go before us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our memory verse, Exodus 3, 16 through 17. Go and gather the elders of Israel together and say unto them, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, appeared unto me, saying, I have surely visited you and seen that which is done to you in Egypt. And I have and I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt unto the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hittite Hittites and the Jebusites unto a land flowing with milk and honey. Hmm. We thank God for the word of the Lord in our memory verse, and we will visit these scriptures uh, in our lesson again today. We'll go into more detail. Introduction, Psalms 34 and 6, This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Psalms 34 and 17, the righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. God heard the cry of the Israelites, and he told Moses that he would come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and will bring them up out of that land, and to a good land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Moses commissioned by God. After fleeing Egypt, Moses was married and working with his father-in-law Jethro. When God appeared and commissioned him to deliver the Israelites, Moses expressed doubts about his abilities and questioned God. God assured Moses of a certain I will be with thee. Yes, he gave him an assurance that he will certainly be with him. God told Moses what to say to the Israelites to assure them that God had indeed heard their cries and he would deliver them. God instructed Moses to tell the children of Israel, I am have sent him the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This to our first outline, God hears the Israelites' cries for help. Exodus, the third chapter, and we're starting with verse 7 through 9. We remember God speaking to Moses out of the burning bush. This divine encounter was specific to God's call to Moses, but reveals the great truth that our afflictions were not unknown to God. 
Isn't that a wonderful statement that our afflictions are not unknown to God? He sees and he knows everything we go through. When we pray, we can express to God that we are speaking to that same God. And listen, God gives the lineage here. He gives the uh, generations. If your father is Abraham, if your father is Isaac, and if your father is Jacob, these, this is the lineage, the line that he has, that you, we have to go through. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We can be thankful that God sees all. God let Moses know that he was aware of the Israelite situation and he had a plan to rescue them. It is good to know that God sees all and listen, he's aware and he has a plan even for us today. Again, God sees and hears and delivers. Exodus 3 and 7. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. We can take comfort in knowing that God hears and responds to our cries of distress. Yes, he does. Psalms 34 and 17, the righteous cry. Yes. And the Lord heareth. Thank you, Jesus, and delivereth them out of how many? All their troubles. God is a God that hears and answers prayer. And we can be thankful for that. We can thank God that when we're in trouble, we can call on him, the righteous cry, and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all our troubles. God's plan. Exodus 3 and 8. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a land, a good land, a large and a large land. It says, unto a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites, gave them the exact place unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. God came down and act on their behalf. God's plan was not only to deliver, but to place them under his protection. God gave them that land. And I have my grandson that says, why? Would God give him lands that other people are occupying already? It's like he took that land from them. Yes, all through the Bible, we find even the Israelites, when sin uh, comes to the presence of God, the wrath of God is poured out. Many times he would afflict those that are sinful and disobedient, and another nation would come and take over their land and take over them even so and so he had given uh these people plenty of time to repent and turn to him and he decided that he was going to give that land god now that was god's decision to give that land to the israelites a land that was flowing with milk and honey the land of canaan and just remember God is just in everything he do. He can justify himself. God's plan also included delivering the Israelites from the land of Egypt and bringing them into the land he had promised to Abraham. This land is the land of Canaan, modern day Palestine, and is the land abundant with resources to help make the Israelites' lives less burdensome than their existence in Egypt. And we can see even today, God punishes his people. I mean, they have not had rest. The Israelites have not had rest since they have rejected the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we know that in the book of Revelations, 
He has not given up on his people. They're being uh, chastened now for their sins, for their rejection, but he has not given up. We know that through tr tests, through trials, through much tribulation, they will turn back to God. When we say turn back to God, we only mean because they believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but they refuse to believe in the Son of God, Jesus Christ. So we know through much tribulation, through much trial and test in the book of Revelations, and let us know they're going to return to God and also accept Jesus Christ as their Messiah. Oppression, prolonged, cruel, or unjust treatment or control. Exodus 3 and 9. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Exodus 12 and 40. Now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. My God, that they were punished and being in Egypt. Not all that time, because we also know, and it, commentators agree uh, that commentators state Joseph ruled in Egypt approximately 80 years. My God. So we know that Joseph was sold unto slavery in Egypt, and Pharaoh, he found favor with Pharaoh because he trusted and believed in God. Oppression is malicious or unjust treatment of or exercise of power over a group of individuals, often in the form of governmental authority or crucial uh, opprobrium, which is disapproval, cr cultural disapproval of a group of people. And so we know that the Israelites have had their share, my God, of punishment uh, before God, how, the, uh, the, how they served in Egypt, and it says they were there for 430 years. And Joseph only ruled for 80 years where he brought peace to the land. And Pharaoh put him over uh, Egypt. He was second to Pharaoh. So we can see that uh, they, the, the Israelites have had their share of being oppressed. Remember the scripture, righteousness exalt a nation but sin is a reproach to any people let's look at our second outline god commands moses to go to pharaoh exodus chapter 3 verse 10 come now therefore and i will send thee unto pharaoh that thou mayest bring forth my people the children of israel out of egypt the current pharaoh king of egypt did not know joseph or care that his Israelite, that this Israelite pertaining to Joseph, had saved Egypt from famine. He saw the pro prolifer proliferation, the increase, the production, the multiplying of Joseph's descendants in his land, and he saw it as a threat to Egypt's national security. Moses was commissioned by God to go to Pharaoh and lead the Israelites out of Egypt. We all know the story uh, how that Pharaoh uh, punished and caused the Egyptians to be in slavery, how they were treated. They're, he oppressed them while they were there. But God heard their cry. They cried out to God and he heard them. And he commissioned Moses to go down to Pharaoh to tell him to let his people go. Last outline, Moses doubts his abilities and God's assurance. In Exodus 3, 11 through 12, Moses wondered what authority he would have to speak with Pharaoh. How would he persuade the Israelites to follow him? This seemed to be an impossible task. Moses received assurance from God that he will not be alone. 
Has God asked you to do or have you been faced with a seemingly impossible task? Consider whether you are living life your way instead of asking God about the plans he has for you. Whenever we face challenges in our lives, we need to remember God's faithfulness to us, his presence with us, and his power to deliver us. God empowers us for the task he sets before us. And I know many of us can identify with the task that he put before us that seemed like an impossible task, but how he promised never to leave us, he equips us and give us what we need to complete the task. Conquer fear and rejection. Exodus 3 and 11. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh? and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt. This is from our Sunday school book about feign humility. Feign meaning false or pretend or fake. <laughs> Moses may have felt his lack of confidence in going before Pharaoh, fearing the king's refusal to let the Israelites go or worse, that he would be killed for returning to Egypt as a punishment for having killed an Egyptian taskmaster. How do we conquer fear or, or and rejection? And this is what Moses had to overcome. He wanted to know, who am I? Uh, how can I do this? Uh, uh, Pharaoh will even listen to me. God provides assurance and confidence. Thank you, Jesus. Exodus 3 and 12. And he said, certainly I will be with thee. God is letting him know. I am going. This makes all the difference in the world. I will be with thee and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve me or serve God upon this mountain. So we thank God for his provisions. He equips us for the task. He assures us that we're not in this task alone. Proverbs 3 and 26, For the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. I remember when the Lord gave me a rhema concerning this scripture. For the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. Proverbs 14 and 26, In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and his children shall have a place of refuge. And that fear is the reverential fear, reverencing God as Lord and Savior, as the Almighty God. In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. We can have confidence in God. Strong confidence. And his children shall have a place of refuge. Our confidence must be in God. God assured Moses that he would not be alone when he confronted Pharaoh. As proof, God offered to show Moses a sign that he had sent him. This is going to be a sign that I have sent you. Once Moses has brought the Israelites out of Egypt, he would bring them to the mountain where he was currently standing. I'm going to bring you back to this place. The Israelites who currently served Pharaoh would soon serve God as God's servants. They were going to go to that mountain and serve God. That was the sign that uh, the assurance that Moses had that God had sent him. And this is our last outline. God's response to Moses, Exodus 3, 13 through 17. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers have sent me unto you, 
and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? Now God had already announced that he was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The forefathers of the Israelites. He had already now announced that to Moses. And that should have been sufficient evidence or enough to tell the children of Israel who sent him. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yet Moses feared being rejected by the Israelites, his own people. Moses asked God, what shall I say your name is? Who can I tell them sent me? In case they challenge his authority to bring them out of Egypt. And this is the word of the Lord to Moses. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he, and he said, thus, this is what you should tell him. Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. God's response to Moses did not provide answers in exactly the fashion he might have desired. No doubt Moses was looking for a different answer. Surely God's faithful presence with him was a source of assurance. But he would need to take up as a matter of faith what God revealed to him about his name. He knew that not only the Israelites would need convincing, but probably Pharaoh as well. I am that. Whatever you need me to be, that's who I am. I am that I am. And we thank God for the word of the Lord. That he can be to us whatever we need him to be. He can be just that. I love this part unto all generations. Exodus 3.15 And God said moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, hath sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto how many? All generations. Thank God. This is his name forever. I am that. I am forever, and this is the memorial. This is my memorial unto all generations. God reiterates the re the revelation or the yes the revelation that he is the Lord God of your fathers. He reiterated, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. God declared this is his name, how long? Forever. And this is a memorial unto all generations. This includes you, me and all our children and all our generations as many as believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That is his name forever. I am that. Whatever you need me to be, I am. God gives further instructions. Gather the elders, the leaders. Exodus verse chapter 3, verse 16, go. And gather the elders of Israel together and say unto them, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, appeared unto me, saying, I have surely visited you and, and seen that which is done to you in Egypt. I see you. Moses was to start with the leaders the elders of Israel, and rehearsed to them his experience a visitation, hallelujah, from the Lord, revealing God, revealing God had seen their afflictions and God's plan, hallelujah, to prepare them for deliverance. It started with the elders, the leaders, and Moses was to rehearse to them his visitation from 
the Lord. The promise of a land flowing with milk and honey. And I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt unto the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites unto a land flowing with milk and honey. This was the plan that was promised to their ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Can you imagine how the Israelites felt hearing these words from Moses? It could have been fear and doubt, and we know that hinders faith. It could have been faith, and faith produces confidence. We know the story, how uh, Moses went down to Pharaoh and told him to let my people go. We know how the Israelites at one time murmured and complained because Pharaoh didn't let the people go right away. He increased their labor. But hallelujah, after a while, God proved himself not only to Moses, but also to the Israelites. And he delivered them from the hands of that mean old Pharaoh. From our Sunday school lesson, I thought this was worthwhile looking into concerning failure. No doubt all of us had failed in something in our life. And it says disobedience implies that one does not totally believe and trust in the promise promises of God. Moses' life is an example of God's preparation process. And saints, our life, our life goes through a preparation process. Each and every one of our lives, God is preparing us to do his will. Before one achieves success, one must and this is the author. One must experience failure. My God, my God. Failure is the vehicle to keep going and to not give up. And we can have a great discussion on this. Because we believe that even though you might fail, it can be God can turn it around for your good. It can be that vehicle to keep you going and to give you strength and to help you to not give up. Failure strengthens faith in God. Hmm. It strengthens your faith in God. Failure? It seems like an oxymoron. But listen, when we fail and God deliver us, it strengthens our faith. We learn so much from our failures. Failure leads to unconditional trust in God's promises. Obedience and trust promote a can-do attitude. So we have to obey God and have unconditional trust. No doubt, no fear, no unbelief. And that's a process that we go through to be able to say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Our confidence must be in God. Fear produces an unwillingness to trust God. And again, we have to trust God. Our confidence must be in God. All right, let's look at preparation for a deliverance ministry. A well-trained army. And I like this from our commentator. He let us know that we have to prepare for the, in this life, prepare for spiritual warfare, prepare for ministry. All right, and he let us know according to Ephesians 6, 13 and 17, God let us know <laughs> in spiritual warfare. This is our spiritual gear. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Ephesians 6, 13 through 17, verse 14, stand therefore, having your lungs girt about with truth. How much does it cost you to tell the truth, 
to put on truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness, the Holy Ghost would help you to live right and to do the right thing. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Put on peace. Look at this spiritual warfare for this well-trained army. Follow peace with all men and holiness without her. No man shall see the Lord. So we want to make sure we are practicing peace, peace lovers. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Lord, help us increase our faith. Grant us that faith that we need to trust and believe in you. Put on faith. Faith cometh by what? Hearing and hearing by the word of God. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Stay in the word, hallelujah. Stay in Sunday school, stay in the word, stay in Bible study. Take on that helmet of salvation. Oh my God, salvation is the helmet that we all need to put on. That salvation that brings repentance, letting us know that we were born in sin, and that we need to be born again. Thank you, Jesus. Accepting Jesus Christ, that death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. See our spiritual armor. When we put it on, we can be well trained in the deliverance ministry. In James 4 and 7, submit yourselves therefore to God. He is the only one. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Thank God for our spiritual armor, our spiritual gear. And last but not least, engage in spiritual formation. 2 Corinthians 3, 17 and 18. This is from our commentary. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass to the glory of the Lord, are changed, hallelujah, will change things into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. And it takes the Spirit of the Lord dwelling in us to change us to have that same image as our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, the Lord is that spirit. And listen, uh, we are changed from glory to glory. And we thank God for his word. God's process of preparing Moses for deliverance ministry took place throughout his life. Hallelujah. Get a hold of this. God's process for preparation takes place throughout your life. He was humbled by past circumstances. We are humbled by different situations that come up in our life. To learn to rely on God rather than the arm of flesh. Have you been taught life lessons? Learning to rely on God instead of yourself, instead of man. He had to endure failure and learn its lessons. Oh, yes. Him killing that Egyptian taskmaster put him on the run. But he had to learn his lessons. He had to develop stubborn perseverance in adversity and scrump scrumptious obedience to the Lord. What is that scrumptious? In something, in doing something, careful to be honest and to do what is right. Careful to do the right thing in obedience to the Lord. He had to learn. He had to endure failure. And we have to learn. We have to endure. We have to stand. In these matters, Moses is a model for today's ministers. We need to conduct a self-assessment 
and then engage in self-improvement to adequately prepare for deliverance ministry. Fortunately, there are many resources. Again, this is from our commentary. There are many resources available. We need only to search them out. There was a, another statement in our Sunday school lesson that each and every one of us, we have a task to complete. And we need to join. It tells us to join in some type of ministry in our churches that we might be able to work in the ministry and that God will prepare us for today's ministers, to be a minister today, fishers of men, planters and waterers, that God can give the increase. We thank God for the Sunday school lesson. Thank God for each and every one of you. And may the Lord bless you. May you learn and may we grow strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Let us be blessed. Uh, this our Sunday school. We need you to be a blessing to our Sunday school, and you can do this by contributing at least five dollars to Cash App Dollar Sign Cash New Life, or you can give in Givelify and keep track of your giving at New Life Community Church of God in Christ on Chambers Road. Make sure. You have the one on Chambers Road, 1570 Chambers Road in Dalewood, Missouri. Don't forget to support our Sunday school. May God bless you and may God keep you until next Sunday.